Hi everybody, Steph here and this morning I'm going to be filming my 1930s makeup look um, from the Makeup Through the Ages collaboration that I'm doing with Claire from the Love of All Things Beauty, Leah from Leah XL, Victoria from Victoria J um, and Tanya from When Tanya Talks. So for this challenge I've been looking at Pinterest and um, I think I came up with a mood board like I did for my last one and I should have been organised. For this one I kind of did my inspiration sort of from like movies and posters. Um, I did sort of save quite a lot of images that I like the look of. Um, but when I was looking through, the 1930s makeup was very, very similar to the 1920s. There was still a lot of Art Deco influence, influences, influences, um, and the makeup for the most part was very similar. The only difference that really struck me was the was kind of eyeshadow. The 1920s, the eyeshadow was very dark, very rounded. Um, the 1930s, the focus seemed to be on the cheeks and the lips. Um, so I'm going to do a lot paler eyeshadow in this one. I've already put my primer on and for this one I've used Dr. Jart's Recovery Primer. <laughs> um, I got this in the beauty box and I do really quite like it so I thought I'd give that a go. And I've got my base on and the base I've used is Collections Last Imperfection um, foundation in cool beige so I've had this a while and I keep going through phases where, where I love it and where I don't like it um, even though you, there's quite a range of colours none of them are quite right for me so I give that a try and I do quite like it um, so what am I going to do next? I've got all my products laid out. I did actually film this yesterday and I've deleted the footage but I'd already taken blog pictures um, so I'm going to try and recreate it the best I can. Um, when I did this yesterday I forgot to put concealer on and I've got quite a big spot there and little ones around my nose. I'm not going to conceal them in this video but I probably will put a bit on before I go out. The other thing with this look is I am going out shortly so I want this to be wearable during the day. I will probably take the lipstick off because yesterday I went out with it on and I got the bus to Tesco and all these pensioners were looking at me. When I got in Tesco's I had red lipstick like smeared and it was all weird. I was like, oh that's why everyone's looking at me. I am the messiest person. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put some powder on. The, the pictures all look very powdered um, so I'm going to use this collection Last Imperfection in medium and I'm actually going to apply this with a beauty blend, a dry beauty blender and then I'll buff it out with my brush afterwards. This isn't completely dry because I use this to put my foundation on but I do use them dry to put my foundation on. I know you are meant to soak them. Um, but for my everyday <coughs> during the week makeup, I apply it on the bus so I can't, I don't have access to water and um So I put that on and I've got my real techniques buffing brush. I'm just gonna I'm sure that's not a good technique, but it, it's just I just need to kind of soften that down a bit. <coughs> The next thing I'm going to do is my eyebrows because I forgot to do them in the 1920s and for that I've dug out my old HD brows. I got this in a beauty box a couple of years ago and I really loved it um, and then I got something new and I just put it to one side. When I've looked at pictures of 1920s makeup I didn't actually pay attention to their eyebrows um, so let me just do that now quickly. So they're dark, pointed, thin. Um, they don't seem to be as overextended um, as they were in the 1920s. The 1920s, it kind of was in line with the bottom of your eye rather than where we would sort of do that. They were more that. Um, so I'm going to fill them in with 
the darkest brown shade at this bottom corner. As I said at the start, I'm going to be doing my eyes a lot paler and for that I've chosen this Essence Stay All Day um, eyeshadow stick as a base um, and then I'm going to go in with this Tanya Burke Cosmetics Hollywood palette. This is a really pretty palette. Um, I think I'm 99% decided I'm going to be using this as my work Christmas do makeup. Um, this was perfectly intact yesterday, never been touched. Um, and now, these shadows are really nice, but I do find that they, they get quite a lot of fallout with them, um, especially the more shimmery shades. They do go on beautiful. I've been using the Fairy Tale palette as my um, everyday makeup at work, and it just works so well. But I'm going to go silent and I'll fast forward this bit with me putting these eyeshadows on. Okay, so my eyes are done. Um, I'm now going to put on some eyeliner. Looking at the pictures, the eyeliner and the mascara is still quite dramatic in the 1930s. Um, but on a lot of the pictures, I mean, a lot of the pictures on Pinterest are like rules. These are how you should... These are the clothes you'd use for your skin tone, hair colour, eye colour, etc. in the 90s. And I'm sure that still goes on. But what I was seeing um, was kind of a shift from the very black black into encouraging people into wearing browns. Um, because this makeup is very shimmery, it kind of lends itself more to a night out. And I'm actually thinking this is definitely what my Christmas eye makeup is going to be for my work's night out. Um, so I'm going to go in for sort of underneath my eyes in with this lucky lead from Essence. This is a bit of a strange colour. I don't really know how best to describe it and I've just noticed that foundation that was on the back of my hand has completely oxidised to like orange. I hope that doesn't happen on my face. Um, it's not black, it's not brown, it's not grey, it's everything. It's every one of those colours all at the same time. Um, but I think this will work quite well against the gold of my eyes. And then for my top lash line, I'm going to attempt um, to do sort of a mini cat flick. Looking to the 1930s, the cat flick had just started to kind of come in um, and as the decades go on it progressively gets more intense um, so this is an essence eyeliner pen I've had this quite a while and it shows no sign of drying out and this is a true black um, you get really good control with the nib um, I'm not one for pen eyeliners um, and this is one I really get on with my only annoyance with products is you can't put the cap on the end of the pen. So I've just done that very, very tidy. My shape eyes don't work with a cat flick usually because my eyes scrunch up and crease and I end up with a transfer from what should be there, like here. Um, I definitely end up looking like a member of KISS. Um, and then, as I was saying before, the eyelashes were dramatic. Um, so I'm going to use this Miss Manga um, mascara from L'Oreal. This has got a weird brush. The actual wand is flexible. I mean, I find this kind of a help and a hindrance, but I do like the shape of the brush. I call it the Christmas tree. Um, wonder. So 
I'm gonna go in with this and see what happens. So, I've done that. I do really like that mascara. I just don't find it terribly pla practical for everyday use. Um, I'm gonna go in and do my cheeks and I'm gonna use the Milani Tea Rose Powder Blush. Um, and this is the most beautiful packaged blush ever. Um, the blush in the 30s was still seemed to be very high on the apples of the cheeks. So I'm going to go and do that. Now this blush is quite highly pigmented. Um, so I've got a really big fluffy brush. I think this is like a powder brush but I'm going to go with it. I was saying before, I am going out pretty much as soon as I've filmed this so I don't want to go too overboard. Um, on camera, on the viewfinder, this looks quite nice. In real life this is a little bit much for me and I'm going to definitely have to blend that out. Um, and yeah, I don't feel like this is sort of replicating and then I'm just going to wipe it off. I, I want to do something that's sort of 1930s inspired that I can actually go out and wear this. Um, I need to learn not to say um because because when I'm editing it irritates me so much and I don't know how it must feel to watch it because I get so annoyed by it. The lips were still red in the 1930s. I feel that there was a move away from the very tiny little mouth to doing your full mouth. I've got quite thin lips anyway um, so I'm just going to do my entire mouth in red. Um, I only have one red lip liner so this is the Essence Ready for Red and this is the same one as I used in the 1920s look. really like these Essence liners. Um, they're so cheap, I, I want to say they're like £1.50. Um, they have so many different colours. I think I've got about six of them um, and that's not even all of them. So they're definitely worth looking at. I actually quite like this lip liner on its own but I do feel that this maybe is slightly more 1940s and 1930s. Um, I'm really undecided about which lipstick to wear. Yesterday I just used this Essence um, but I've also dug out a Maybelline Colour Drama. So the Maybelline Colour Drama is light it up the Essence is there to wear. So I think today I'm going to use a little combination of both. I'm going to go in with this one first. I don't actually feel like that's made any difference at all to the lip. Um, but yeah, that's my finished look. I'm just going to zoom you in now so you can have a closer look at this. Um, and then I'll zoom out and we'll try a little bit more. So there's my finished 1930s inspired makeup look. Um, if you've watched this all the way to the end, please let me know in some way. If you've liked this, give me a thumbs up. Um, and you can always contact me on um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. All the links um, are below. Um, don't forget to check out the other ladies who are doing this challenge. Um, I can't wait to see what they've done. Um, and join us back here, not next Friday, the Friday after, for the 1940s makeup look. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.